demand a glitch slash jug style part two tutorial i've been doing so much so it's taking me a while to get to this first before we get into it i noticed some things on my last video so the egotistical anime boys found that video Sorry, they're kind of upset because they're like, oh, this is in jug style. I'm pretty sure I said in the first part of this video that my style is a mix between the two. And I also made it clear that like, you're just supposed to take bits and pieces of these tutorials. You can use it for jug. I'm not saying that my edits are jug. I'm saying it's a mix between two styles and you can just take what you want and use it for jug or glitch. It doesn't matter. Granted, the edit that I gave as an example was like not even close to jug. So maybe that was my fault, but I did tell you guys it's a mix. And so I'm still gonna label them glitch slash jug because it is a mix of both. Um, if you don't like it, then I don't know what to tell you. It's Virgo season, so I don't really care. My birthday's next week, so nothing else matters. Unlike last video where I just showed you like how to do individual clips, um, I'm gonna be showing you an assortment of things, but we're still gonna be doing transitions and clips. Don't worry, I got you. We have a lot to get through today, guys. So let's, let's keep the pace, right? First things first, audio reverb. Audio reverb is actually a really good, I don't know, a really good effect to add with these types of edits i feel like they add character audio reverb if you don't know what it is it's basically just like a very i don't know like cinematic echo i don't know how to explain it it's just like a really nice sounding echo of something and i don't use this all the time because my mac literally breaks when i do this but sound effects of ellie here because we love her so listen to the difference you remember me yeah you remember me you remember me you remember me okay so do you guys hear the difference on that the echoes let's go to effects and presets and search up reverb add that to your voiceover then we have a bunch of settings so we're gonna make the reverb time 70 then the diffusion at 50 the k is going to stay at 25 then the brightness will be 100 and then the dry out should be 150 I'm pretty sure i got these settings off of this account because i was looking for good reverb settings and his video by happened to come up so moving on from my audio reverb let's do some glitch style text effects first we're gonna do my basic go-to standard how i make my text look so we have the font times new roman sometimes i use bold sometimes i won't do it in bold but today we have bold click the arrow and then go to animate then go to tracking once the tracking situation drops down we're gonna click on the stopwatch to make our first keyframe and keep it at zero then i click O to quickly go to the end of my clip and I like to make it nine because I feel like if I make it more than nine it expands out too much and I think that looks silly so and then I'm gonna copy and paste these keyframes to my next text now let's add some glow and drop shadow and so I use the plugin deep glow so once you add deep glow as you can see it's extremely bright so i'm going to i bring in the radius a little bit because i don't know i feel like if you have too much radius it's just gonna look really weird so i'm gonna keep the radius at 40 and if you think it's too bright you can turn down the exposure then what i would do is i would add drop shadow it's not gonna make much of a difference because the background is black but um if it was on a clip obviously add drop shadow and then make the distance six it looks a bit silly in quarter but i promise in full it looks normal so you're gonna go two frames before your text goes into the second one for your second to last frame you're gonna click S on your keyboard to bring up scale, and I'm just gonna scale it so that it's so that it's in our face. On the last one frame, we are going to push S again, but this time, you see this like little chain symbol? We're gonna click that, and we're kinda gonna stretch it out now. You can stretch it out up and down, or we can do, you know, side to side. I feel like for this, I'm going to do stretch it out to the side. Now you could leave it like this, you could but sometimes i feel like it looks awkward because there's nothing on this second part of your text in the edit so i will cut the text one frame here and then i will click s again unchain the thing and then i'll do it the opposite way so we went from side to side before so i'll make it go up 
Congratulations, guys. You did a glitchy style text effect. So as you guys saw in the example edit, I did kind of a interesting intro, right? So I'm going to teach you how to do that. Firstly, you want to have all your clips in order. Pretty much it's like a quick montage in the edit. Make sure that the clips aren't too long. You don't need to put any twixter or slow-mo onto this. You're just going to leave it pretty, pretty raw. So let's look up BCC directional blur and add that to your clip. I'm going to make the blur amount 300 and you guys can make the angle 90 or turn it to zero, which I will be doing because I don't know, 90 angle is kind of weird. We're going to keyframe our first one, keep it at 300 and then go over two to three frames, one, two, three, make it zero. And after that, I'm gonna copy and paste these two keyframes to the rest. So after I've done all that, I'm going to highlight all the ones that we added directional blur to and pre-compose that. Then from there, we're going to go back to the effects and presets bar and search up S underscore freeze frame. So I like to make the freeze frames number a three. This is just going to make the clip kind of lag like that. But in the intro, I have this kind of like black and white thing going on. So you could just simply add black and white or, or you can make a black and white coloring, which is what we're going to do now. Oh my God, I had to like take a pause to order my food and oh my God. Okay, anyway, so you're gonna need the plugin Magic Bullet looks for this because it's basically like a coloring. Not a lot of people have this in their magic bull looks for some reason. So I will have a preset in the mega link below. It'll have this effect in it so that you can use it in case your magic bullet looks doesn't have it. So we're gonna put the foam grain amount pretty much three, but I don't wanna do three for some reason. Then we're gonna go to diffusion. For diffusion, we're gonna put the glow around 67. And then we're going to add exposure. For exposure, we're just gonna do 70. The way I chose this clip of Loki, I'm just realizing that's like actually horrible of me. <laughs> then we're gonna find film print and we're gonna keep it at Kodak 2383 and turn the saturation down to zero. Then let's do brightness and contrast. Turn the brightness to 18 or higher, depending on how dark your clips are. I'm gonna keep it like that because I kind of do want it to be dark. Now I realize I should add a scale in. So I'm gonna scale, make the first keyframe 100 and then it's gonna go to 110, just so I can have some movement going on. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do for here is some one frame solids. So go to layer new solid and make sure that the color is white. And I'm just going to put a white solid one frame before each clip. So it's kind of like a flash. And an extra tip is to add some sort of camera flash sound effect every time the white solid pops up. That's what I did. So it's kind of like a camera. Now let's move on to an effect that I really want to show you guys. I will also have this black and white coloring on my pay hit. I think I have it on there now. It's like a dollar. So the second effect I feel like is really beneficial for this type of style that you're doing called the signal plugin. I'll show you kind of what it does. It kind of makes it like grainy. So if I turn it off, this is what it looks like. Now it's kind of like a VHS old tape. And I leave my settings as is. The only thing I like to turn off with this plugin is this ugly little black and white line strip. I don't know, but I hate it. So I go to Luma modulation and I turn it off. I'm still trying to figure out the settings with this, but I thought it was worth mentioning because I did do it in the actual edit of Thor and I'm gonna use it more often. I think it looks really cool. Okay, so I always say that Jug and Glitch Style are literally a copy and paste of shakes and one frames and whatever else. And I stand by that. So today for these three clip transitions, it's just gonna be pretty chill shake one frames and some extra effects. So I don't have anything on these because I'm going to show you with this style that I do, I use time remap, not Twixter or anything. I suck at time remap and velocity. So it's gonna be embarrassing if this turns out really bad today. Sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't. Double click that so it's showing like an arrow and also add motion blur. I'm gonna right click my clip and go to time and enable time remapping. At your last keyframe, you're going to wanna increase it. By moving this time thing going on right here, you wanna increase it a couple of seconds. 
If you increase it by too many seconds, when you do your graph, it's gonna be a mess. Trust me, I know by experience. And now with the graphs. So I'm gonna move this stick down some and then this stick up a little bit. For me, my time rewrapping, I like my clip to start out really fast. I don't care if it ends slow. So now I'm gonna do it for the rest of my clips. Once again, this could look really ugly on mine, but I believe in you. I'm running into an issue. It's kind of like a glitch going on here. I'm gonna try and fix it. You see like right there. So I saw somebody say you can add another keyframe here and move it up a little bit until your warping goes away. Sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't. We are going to do a zoom. Somebody in my last video said that my zooms look really smooth. Guys, my zooms are actually very ugly. First, I like to mark the keyframe, obviously, at just 1.0, move that to the end, and then I'm going to zoom this easy ease and let's do a little graph right i've been editing for years and my graphs are still just i don't i don't know i like know how to do graphs but i don't know how to do graphs so then now i'm gonna look up brightness and contrast some people use exposure some people use whatever they fancy i like brightness and contrast now let's do a shake so i'm gonna look at my heavy y shake and we learned this in the first video, so if you're lost, go watch the first video. But uh, yeah, now I'm going to add a one frame, so go to new layer, adjustment layer. Again, we've learned one frames before, so. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna do invert, and I'm gonna change the RGB to green. One thing I like to add sometimes is BCC Ripple Dissolve. Obviously, you need the BCC plugin, and I just like to add it. Now we need to make a transition that's gonna go into the second clip. Let's do that. So we're gonna do an up shake. Last video, I taught you how to do a slide x shake but now we're gonna do an up slash y shake we're gonna add bloomer curves to the clip and make sure that warp x and warp y are both on reflect so we're gonna start off with our first shift y keyframe it's just gonna be zero and we're gonna be moving every three frames so one two three and that's gonna be negative 65 and go over three frames again and that's gonna be positive 100, and then three frames again, and that's gonna be negative 1000. I have to move my keyframe back because, you know, it went beyond the end of the clip. You can easy use these keyframes if you want. Now on Mac, what I do is highlight them all and then hold option and then squeeze them together because I don't like my Y shake transition to extend out too much. Okay, so let's start on clip two. Once again, I already did the time remapping for clip two. The only thing I'm gonna do is copy and paste my brightness settings because why would I do those again? So now we're going to finish that Y shake. Once again, warp X is reflect, warp Y is reflect. Then we're gonna keyframe our first shift Y. So we end it with negative 1000. We're gonna start with negative 1000. We're gonna go over three frames and then we'll do positive 90, go over three frames again again and that will be negative 35 then over three frames again and that's going to be zero obviously easy ease them and so now let's add an overlay you can find the overlay in the mega link down below along with that film grain coloring situation we talked about earlier okay so for this it's actually the next day my recording didn't get its life together and it messed up so it's seven in the morning we're getting an overlay and so pretty much with overlays i am kind of bad at using overlays but usually what i do is you kind of have to i don't know you see how it has these two little white particles and then when you move it to the next frame it has multiple so that's kind of where i want clip three to start so two particles and then clip three is with all the particles so like with overlays basically you just have to line it up to where it's gonna make sense i copied and pasted my brightness on here and now we're just gonna do a shake we are gonna use the plugin twitch for this so let's look that up now i used to get a lot of compliments on my twitch shakes which i feel like people were actually lying to me my twitch shakes are actually so rough the thing about twitch is that it's already meant to give you like harsh shakes and my settings i feel like are really high they might be normal i don't know so if you think they're high don't say anything because i will think about it for months the amount is going to be 170 the speed will be 40 then go to enable enable slide some people enable light but in light is just basically an additional brightness and since i already have brightness going on i don't need to enable that then go to operator controls and 
click the slide again. Sometimes I mess with the direction, sometimes I don't, but I kind of want to just make it, I'll make it 35 here. Sometimes I won't touch it at all, but I kind of want to today. After you do all of that, we're going to keyframe the amount. Keep it at 170 for your first keyframe. Then I go between three to five keyframes over. So I'll do five. One, two, three, four, five, and make it zero. For Twitch, you wanna make sure that the keyframes don't extend on for too long, otherwise it's just gonna look like an earthquake on your edit. I like to make my graph for Twitch very close together. Let's make a one frame. Now let me put you guys on to this one plugin. It's called Glitchify, if you don't know what it is. It's actually not gonna make a huge difference here because we have already like a lot going on but glitchify is just like a glitch plugin look at that it's just glitchy i think this is really good for like those bright strobe glitch edits but also glitch edits in general and i think it's good for jug too it's a good plugin to have all these plugins are really good to have so once again my time remapping for this last clip is horrible but coloring time i'm gonna make this 15 and then we're gonna go into magic bullet looks so you're gonna need light flex and the mega link i will add just a light flex preset with nothing else in it. You know, Magic Bullet looks maybe outdated for you. That's okay, I got you. I'm gonna make the boost negative around negative seven. We are going to go to curves. I'm gonna make this 1.100. Then let's add diffusion. So for diffusion, all we're gonna do is, we're actually just gonna leave it as is. So I don't wanna add too much hue and saturation, so I'm gonna make it 70. I think we're good here. Alrighty, so now we're gonna add this, I forgot what it's called, BCC Fast Foam Glow. I love this glow. It's actually really underrated. I'm gonna make the glow intensity pretty low and then the glow radius is gonna be like 50. Now it may be too bright in some cases and if that happens, you're gonna have to turn your brightness and contrast down or you can just really turn it off. <laughs> um, Sometimes I literally have to go clip by clip and turn down the brightness because my colorings tend to be bright. Okay, so once you're done with the coloring, that's gonna be it. You're just gonna add S flicker, panning, RSMB if you want, and sometimes I'll even add borders. But that's all for part two of the glitch slash jug style tutorial. I cannot wait to make more of these. I think my next video might be a glitch TikTok style. If you guys want, you can go watch the edit with sound on my Instagram. Um, bye. <laughs>